let me try to take a second here to set this up. Um, I was going to test the GPS and the flight controllers, giving it control of the platform today and see how that goes. So I went out into the front field where I have more clear space. Uh, that's my notebook computer, which is an old Toshiba. It won't run anything above Windows 7. <laughs> the four USB ports on the front, you kind of have to choose which ones you use and which ones you don't based on the fact that the etches are pretty much wore out on the USB uh, ports inside the computer because it's just so old. Uh, you can sort of see perhaps on the right side there's a video transmitter and it's kind of just stuck into the plastic box halfway up on the right side. You can barely see it. Laying down on the tailgate below that is the 433 MHz telemetry radio. And then that notebook is running Mission Planner. I've got the truck turned into the sun so that I'm shaded. You can see I'm looking into the sun. or, But even kneeling down with the box that the notebook is in directly blocking the sun, I, I can't see the screen. But I knew before I flew that... This thing's not calling out my modes and stuff to me. Uh, it's not reflecting my modes. It's connected to the platform, and the video's been recorded. And, but uh, when I change modes on my radio here, I don't hear the modes, and I don't see the modes reflected and being changed in the uh, ground station screen, Mission Planner. Uh, I can't really see the screen that well at this point, so I decide, okay, we're going to stick with the plan, and the plan was specifically to take off from just beyond where the truck is here, go up 20 feet or so, and uh, move towards the other side of the field. And get out there a few yards away and stuff and invoke return to home and see what happens. Uh, that's a pretty good first test of uh, GPS and the flight controller. Uh, one of the first things you like to have a hold of too is that old oh, crap button. Return to home. Click. Um... So what you're going to see here is I took off. Pam wasn't ready to video yet. It was just me on the GoPro. Again, I think I've got the GoPro pointing in the correct direction now, but you can't see what I'm doing with my RC radio in my hand. But you can see the platform. And we're getting up close enough to where you can see the platform. So things are improving. <laughs> and this ground station, by the way, it records the video from the video receiver and the uh, mission planner at the same time. So it's completely synchronized when I get finished to make these videos. I don't have to worry about synchronizing the uh, view out the front of the camera on the platform with the uh, data that's on the screen on Mission Planner. That part's going great. I just have a few more things to work out there. New things? I haven't done this in five years. Anyway, so I'd also changed recently my modes control to the six the switches which are across the top of my T16S instead of uh, levers and stuff you flip. So I've got one for each mode, the buttons I push. So I took off in manual mode. What you're going to see here at first is I took off at manual mode and went up a little bit. And then I just went over to the six button on the right, which is land, and touched it. Figured what the hey. This doesn't even take a GPS. This is purely barometer and flight controller. Let's see if it works. Uh, so the thing started landing. 
uh, got down near the grass, and I just said, oh, no, 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 I wanted to land on the landing pad, so, whoops, uh, kind of flopped around there a little bit with it, getting it back onto the landing pad. Uh, it didn't want to respond correctly. I think it was still in its landing mode, not play, paying complete attention to the sticks like it would in manual mode, but basically set it back down. I didn't, I didn't want to set it down the grass. I don't want stuff getting in it and, and biasing these first few tests. So, let's look at that. There it is, ready to launch. Uh, I use the larger milliamp hour battery, but the lower discharged type. Right there on the top. And the GPS locked up out here uh, before the ESC even signaled how many cells it was connected to. So let's go back and do this flight and see what happens. Take off. Invoke land. And it starts to land. Now, I kind of started playing with the sticks here and got to slopping it around, like I say. Okay, I think it's actually doing what the mode switches are telling it to do, although the ground control station won't verify that. Let me set up the second flight. <clears throat> so, I brought it up into the air. I was going to fly it over towards like straight away towards that little bitty tree to the right out near the road and get it over there and invoke return to home. Test that. Uh, you can hear me complaining in the video. It's just not doing what I want it to do. We'll have to look at the uh, telemetry and stuff later at what altitude it thought it was at, this, that, and the other. Uh, I'm probably flying it too close to the ground and stuff, but that's out of abundance of caution. I got it over there, walked it over there. I didn't walk the whole way. <laughs> and um, rotated it 180 degrees so it was pointed back towards the home position and then flipped the uh, switch. It's actually pushed a button, in truth. No, I did flip a switch. Return to home is a switch on this. I flipped the return to home switch. And the platform seemed to do exactly what it was supposed to do. It went over to home reasonably close and uh, landed um, and powered down, disarmed itself. I mean, what more could you ask for? So I'm very, very sure I have a very valid uh, return to home function right now. Uh, that makes me feel a whole lot easier. And now we can go from there with other things. And right now other things seem to be solving some problems. I can't view the uh, ground station computer because of sunlight. Uh, for some reason, the ground station uh, on my notebook and my desktop inside the basement don't agree as far as understanding when I change modes on the platform, reflecting that, etc., etc., etc. Other than that, the ground station seems to re re receive the telemetry and work with it well, although the time and error figure I saw was incorrect. But those are little things we can do later after the platform flies properly. Uh, what else? Um... In truth, and I'll show you this at some point, this is funny, the uh, uh, Corel Video Studio Multicam Capture software captures the PC uh, camera, which is the way the FPV video is coming in backwards. <laughs> when I get ready to put it in this video, I have to reverse it uh, when there's writing on the screen it's going to be really bad because it's reversed until 
uh, high reversiveness editing software. So anyway, let's look at this flight. We're going to come up. We're going to go across the field and the altitude. I'm in altitude hold, in my opinion, by which button I pushed on the modes buttons. And I'm going across the field. It, I think it thinks it's staying pretty much at the same altitude. I, I, we'll just have to see more as this goes here. I get it to where I want to stop it over there not to get it too close to the trees. I rotated it 180 degrees back to home and invoked our TH and it worked perfectly. Not doing at all what I really want it to do. So I'm not thrilled with the altitude hold, but I decided to continue with the experiment. And as I moved out, I don't know if the terrain following feature is causing some things here or not. I know I have it turned on. There's some little jerks in the platform. I haven't tuned the PIDs yet or done an auto-tune. So I take it out there, decide that's close enough to everything and far enough away from home. And I rotate it 180 degrees towards the landing or the takeoff. And the monkey flips the switch. As it comes back, it seems to decrease in altitude. And again, that could be the terrain following feature. I don't know if it's picked up the tiles for this area of the map yet. That's something we'll talk about later, terrain following. I might perhaps turn that off. But it came back within four or five feet of home, landed, and disarmed itself just exactly like it's supposed to be. So now I know that if I'm having a heart attack, I can flip the return to home switch and fall down dead with complete assurance that this model will come home, land, shut itself down, and be sitting there when they find us both. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> this is Pam's video of the second flight. I'll deny it, but I think she's getting better videos. See how it kind of goes for me? I kind of stare up aside. And then it kind of settles into what would be altitude hold, where I'm just going to use the right stick to move it forward, right, left, yaw, but basically. And, and the throttle still does tweak it up and down. See, from her shot, it looks like it is kind of rising there and keeping the same distance from the ground till right there, and then it drifts down. I don't know. We'll figure it out. And I don't know if those were me or the platform. Again, the PIDs have not been touched, so it's not ready to fly <laughs> quite everything yet and right here is near the end where I rotate it uh, 180 degrees yaw and then the monkey flips the switch and off it goes to the uh, takeoff point and you see it's going down in elevation but so is the hill so uh, maybe I'll turn off terrain following feature and do these and see what happens So, uh, I, I, that's the end of that. I'm not going to say more about her videoing. This is Mission Planner synchronized with the FPV video. And this is going to be the first flight uh, where I invoked land. And then didn't like where it landed and took over manually, sort of, and goofed it up a little bit. That's okay. 18 satellites locked up. 18 amps, 22 amps draw, 13 feet in the air. Vernon like heading to landing. waypoint home, <laughs> altitude is 8, ground speed We jump is up one. to 15 feet, down to 10, all sorts of crap. Then I just Vernon down, try not to bounce it. 
Still got 17 satellites locked up. <laughs> and then we'll have the second flight. So everything seems to work on the ground station except for reporting modes and stuff. I'll have Rearm. to Mode figure not that armable. out. Vernon heading to Waypoint Home. Altitude is 1. Ground speed is 0. That was probably because it was Rearm. still in land mode. mode. Not armable. And that land mode is not armable, so I had to put it back in manual mode on the radio there. 16 satellites. Vernon armed. Thirty-one amps. That's all there for a second. Eighteen feet near twenty-one. I invoke Vernon altitude call. That's where we're headed back to. Ground speed is two. Now it says it's at eight feet. And it's, we're moving it out towards the uh, point where I rotate it and tell it to hang back. Come back. Twelve feet. Thirteen feet. It thinks it's rising. I don't think it was rising there frequently. 13, 12 feet. It's descending. Vernon heading to Waypoint Home. Altitude is 12. Ground speed is 2. It's about 12 feet. There's one of those strange jerks. There's another. Still right around 12 feet. I think it might be doing a pretty good altitude hold, give or take. And there it is where I rotated it, and then I flipped return to home. Click. It starts going up from 12 feet to 20. 21, 23, 24, Vernon okay. Point home. Altitude is 24. Ground speed is 3. And there it comes, yeah. At, what's the ground speed? I have to listen to her again. I don't have it on the screen. And it just starts its landing sequence. And that's the end of that. That's pretty good. I like that. Vernon, he's armed. 